welcome to my video all about how I am attempting to eradicate thrips from my houseplants. If you are new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. So to set some context, I have had thrips for so long I've lost count. I It's over a year, I think probably about 14 months not great at all. I used to have over a hundred houseplants, now I think I'm down to about 50. I think 10 of those I sold and 40 of those I lost to thrips. Also it's important to say for kind of full context, full transparency, there are definitely some things that I could have done to avoid getting thrips and I didn't do those things but at the time I didn't really know what thrips were I didn't know the things that you can do to try to avoid getting thrips so I definitely could have prevented them but hey ho here we are one of those things that I definitely could have done to try to avoid getting thrips is when buying a new houseplant putting it in a sort of isolation I do think that my thrips infestation was probably from a new plant that I bought from a garden center brought home and just didn't isolate at all it probably had thrips that quickly spread to a lot of my other plants. So one of the main things with thrips that make them so tricky to eradicate are that thrips are asexual, which means that they can reproduce with just one of them. You don't even need two thrips. You can just have one, they'll multiply by themselves. They don't need to mate with another. And this is what makes them really tricky because you can do a lot of things to try and get rid of thrips. You can get rid of, let's say, a thousand thrips, but if you accidentally miss just one that's maybe hiding in the soil, hiding on the underside of a leaf, you can very quickly have another infestation if you don't catch that one. I've had other insect pests in the past, like it is very common to have, but I would say that thrips is definitely the most difficult one that I have dealt with. Just as a quick example, I recently bought this alocasia. I think it's red velvet. Is that what this one's called? Uh, beautiful plant. It's just a baby one. Despite checking over it in the garden centre when I got home, I didn't actually realise that this plant had mealybug. Was not happy when I got home and saw it. But by just spraying some natural uh, bug killer on there and really keeping an eye on it and catching every single mealy bug, I was able to eradicate those mealy bugs relatively quickly. I think from discovering that this plant had mealy bug, giving it a treatment and then not seeing any more was probably only within about a week and not wanting to jinx it, but now I haven't seen a single other mealy bug in over a month, so that's been great. So the first thing that I did when I discovered that I had thrips was I put all of the plants together that had thrips and removed them from my other plants and put them in another room. I did not want any more thrips to spread to any of the unaffected plants. I then went through all of those plants and I just cut back all of the leaves where I could see quite a few thrips. So for context as well, thrips are very, very small. They're just a few millimeters. They're very skinny, kind of black insects. If you look them up online, it says things like they look like a tiny black grain of rice that's kind of their shape you have to look very closely at your plants to see them and also one of the things to note as well is that thrips will lay their eggs in the soil kind of around the roots of your plants so the second thing that I did after I'd cut back all of the leaves and kind of just really assessed whether I thought a plant was worth saving and by that I mean if there was more than just one leaf left the thing that I then did was I removed all of the soil from the plants and I just put the plant with the kind of naked roots in just a pot of water. Each plant had its own pot of water. It was not a fun time, my whole bathroom was taken over. But I was hoping from that that I could really eradicate any of those thrips eggs or the small thrips that, they, that were around the roots. I then sprayed all of the leaves with a mixture of hand soap, natural hand soap and neem oil and water. I made that into a mix and I sprayed that on all of the plants, but not only just sprayed it, I wiped down all of the leaves. So the leaves front and back and the whole stem. So I think some people think that you can just kind of like spray that all over. That's what I was initially hoping for, I think. Um, but actually that doesn't work because although it will kind of go over the thrip, it doesn't always kill it. You really have to kind of like wipe it off. So it did take 
a very long time, quite a few hours, especially because I had a lot of house plants and as it was growing season when I first discovered this, all of those plants were growing really well and really had a lot of leaves. Once I'd done that, I obviously saw my plant collection was very reduced after the ones that I kind of had to part with and the ones that I thought I could save, I still kept them isolated. One of the other things that I did was any plants that were kind of really like extra special, I guess, I completely moved them to a whole different room. I actually put them downstairs. Um, so this, for example, was like my variegated euphorbia plant, which I absolutely love and was quite a rare find before buying that. I'd never seen it for sale anywhere else before in a garden centre and I haven't seen it anywhere since. So that is a special plant to me and I really didn't want it to catch thrips. I have seen online that um, some places say that uh, cacti and succulents can't catch thrips, they definitely can, some of mine have. After I'd done that, sprayed all the plants, wiped them down, isolated them, I was hoping that that would kind of be it. I still kept them in uh, their roots in water for a bit longer and then I really kind of like cleaned the roots and then put them all into fresh soil. So obviously the soil that you remove you want to get rid of, throw that away because you don't know what pests and eggs could be hiding in that soil, you do not want to use it for those same plants again or for any other plants so unfortunately you do have to compost that soil. After that I left the plants for a few days still in the water I then went back and sprayed all of the plants again again wiping them with a cloth examining the leaves really closely and really just trying to catch any thrips that I could. Once I'd put them in that new soil I went and put them back in my room but as I had a greatly reduced collection of plants it meant that I could space them out a bit more as well so the thing is with thrips they do spread from plant to plant very quickly so I wanted to make sure that didn't happen so I definitely sprayed spread my plants out a bit more as much as I could. I thought that was going to kind of be the end of it and although the thrips numbers were greatly reduced and also because I had less plants so obviously less plants means less thrips to multiply on um, then I slowly started to notice kind of just like more and more thrips creeping up so as I said earlier because thrips can reproduce asexually it means that if I just missed one thrip sadly infestation comes all over again so essentially what I did is I just kept cutting back the leaves I cut back so many leaves um, of a lot of plants a lot of them actually I kind of cut them down to no leaves um, when it's growing season like they will grow back and sometimes it's just good to prune your house plants that way anyway and they'll grow back kind of fuller but um, I think that definitely helped reducing the amount of leaves on the plant as long as you keep those roots healthy it should grow back but then I did realize that I think that kind of natural solution with the neem oil and the soap wasn't really working I did need something stronger I did a lot of research and I really don't like using those kind of like really strong chemical bug busting solutions that are just so overloaded with chemicals they're just really really bad um i know that a lot of people do use these and a lot of people this is kind of like a last resort but just for me i do try to keep things as natural as possible where i can but I did realise that that natural solution wasn't really working. So I went to another garden centre and I found this, which is um, Ecoeffective Houseplant Bug Control. It is, so I don't actually know if it's completely chemical free. It doesn't really say, but it does say it's good for garden wildlife. It's kinder to the planet. It's in a recycled bottle. It's made in the UK as well. And it does contain um, nutrients for healthy plant growth, as so magnesium, iron, different things like that. So I was hoping that this would be another solution. So what I did with that is I just sprayed it onto a cloth and then I uh, wiped that cloth along all of the leaves, the stems, uh, front and back of the leaf, exactly as I did with the neem oil solution, but with this, which is hopefully a bit stronger. And I do think that that does seem to be working. I think the thing with when you have thrips is that you just really need to be checking your plants quite often, um, multiple times a week, if not every day. I think the sooner that you can notice a thrip, the um, the sooner you can kind of like eradicate it and hopefully it hasn't reproduced. The thing that I also didn't know is that um, 
you'll see you'll start to see loads of tiny black dots which i think are thrip eggs let me know in the comments if that's not right but i think that's what it is because as soon as i see those then suddenly shortly after i do have more thrip so i think that's what it is and the good thing with this is that you can use it multiple times a lot of those kind of really heavy chemical solutions um they are thought to be more effective so it depends on your kind of like thoughts on using chemicals on your plants but because they're so strong you're only meant to use them once which means that if you do see thrips again I don't really know what you're meant to do if you can't kind of keep using that and surely it's more harmful for the plant as well so with this I kind of just kept spraying it on every few days or every week and gradually and gradually the thrips have reduced now some plants I think this has worked uh, better on than others but there's definitely a noticeable reduction in the amount of thrips that I have seen so now when I look at my plants I'll sometimes just see one if I look really closely sometimes it's kind of two three four um but when I do see a few of them it tends to be they're kind of just in one area of the plant so that might be if a new leaf has emerged they'll kind of all go to that leaf or they'll kind of come up as the leaf unfurls um meaning they were kind of inside that point the more and more that I am inspecting my plants and uh spraying on these solutions and wiping those strips away the better things are and then the final thing that I did is I got blue sticky traps. So they are very similar to the yellow sticky traps, which are a lot more common. Um, but these blue ones are meant to be specifically for thrips. They're meant to be attracted to the blue color. So I put them in the soil and any plants where I've got them kind of on a moss pole or they're kind of taller plants where the leaves are quite far from the soil, um, I will put them higher up as well. So I'll put um, two in one plant. Now these I think have caught a a few thrips that's hard to say but um also i found that they are the sticky trap is just quite good for if i'm checking my plants say just like quickly before a work meeting or something like that and i do see that there is a thrip there i will just like bend the sticky trap onto the thrip and it will very quickly pick it up and then it'll be stuck on there so um it's also just like a really good method to kind of getting your thrips away from the plant as soon as you see them rather than kind of seeing it running to get my like cloth and spray and things and then trying to remove it or um, removing it any other way they also I think once they're a bit disturbed they'll move quite quickly so sometimes you don't have time to kind of like run get a tissue or cloth or something like that and then by the time you run back the thrip has gone so that's kind of my journey to eradicating thrips on my house plants it is definitely a journey it's not a quick solution or a quick fix but the good thing is that since i have implemented these new solutions so the sticky traps and that eco spray i've definitely seen a big reduction in thrips and hopefully that will continue i'm sure you have many other tips for getting rid of thrips as well so do let me know in the comments below also let me know your experience or if you have any questions at all i really hope that you've enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already otherwise I'll see you in my next video